the ancient Benin Empire and its great walls. The Benin Empire, established by the Edo people, was a prosperous ancient African state located in what is now southern Nigeria in West Africa. Initially known as the city of Ibino, historians report that Benin City was founded around 1180 CE. As reported by some oral traditions, the Edo people, the original ethnic group of the kingdom, were once ruled by a line of semi-mythical kings known as Ugisos, translated kings of the sky. The first Ogiso king was Ogiso Igodo, who ruled from C40 BC to 16 CE. The Ogisos were believed to be descendants of Pa Idu, the youngest son of Osanobwa, also known as God. The Ogisos had godlike qualities and were worshipped by the people. They ruled the entire kingdom with the backing of a council of elders called the Adonisan of Kingmakers. Leadership in the ancient Benin Kingdom was phenomenal. There were about 36 Ugisos who ruled over the kingdom before the leadership transition to Obas. The Ugisos, or first dynasty of Benin, was succeeded by the second dynasty, ruled by the Obas. And according to oral tradition, it was under the Obas that Benin civilization hit its peak between 1300 and 1700. Generally, royals were believed to be ruled by divine rights and lots of royal ceremonies and rituals were celebrated in the kingdom in reverence and loyalty to the rulers. The first Oba of Benin was Oba Iweka I, who died in 1246. Today, the Oba ruling system is still running as there is still an Oba in the present-day Benin city in Nigeria, who mainly serves a symbolic role. The Kingdom of Benin flourished from the 1200s to the 1800s CE. It was one of the few marvels of the world at the time, but the people did not write down their history as it was bequeathed through oral culture, their arts and their legends. They had a rich oral tradition of histories, myth and legends. The Benin Empire was one of the oldest and most highly developed states in the coastal hinterland of West Africa. The empire reached its provincial eminence in the mid-17th century and extended its powers across a large area of West Africa, including present-day southern Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Ghana and Ivory Coast. At its peak of dominance, historians believed that the Benin Empire controlled a terrain approximately twice the size of metropolitan France. The empire recorded amazing feats in architecture, science, administration, astronomy and town planning. But it was most renowned for its amazing artworks, the renowned Benin Bronze. The Benin Empire advanced artistic culture, especially in the famous artifacts of bronze, iron and ivory. Out of sheer black ingenuity, they made bronze wall plaques and life-sized bronze heads of the Obas. These works from the empire were among the very finest around the world, wrote Professor Felix von Lushken, formerly of the Berlin Ethnological Museum. Technically, the bronzes represented the very highest possible achievement of the Benin Empire. Many of the creative works were designed specially for the palace mostly for ceremonial use, as a good number of the artworks depicted the Obas in various costumes. The artisans in the empire enjoyed royal patronage and occupied a designated district of the capital, which explained how respected they were in the kingdom. The Benin art was so magnificent and high profile compared to other artworks around the world at the time. By C900 CE, the people were smelting copper and zinc ores and casting brass to produce a wide range of fine metal works like never seen before. Wood works of art were also predominant in different parts of the kingdom. These treasures of wood, ivory and metal made their way into different parts of the world through trade and surprised observers with their phenomenal degree of artistry and craftsmanship. 
The empire's contact and trade with Mediterranean countries was believed to be one of its major success points. Different people from around the world sought after the kingdom's artworks and other items of value. Exports from the kingdom of Benin included gold, ivory, pepper and exotic animals which were exchanged for metals, often in the form of manilas or bangles, which were then melted down and recast or used as a form of currency. Meanwhile, cowrie shells were the main means of trade and exchange within the kingdom. The civilization of the kingdom gradually evolved from rural settlements into larger communities which later resulted in the flourishing Benin city from the 13th to the 17th centuries. In the late 13th century, royal power was firmly established in the kingdom of Benin. This contributed towards the kingdom's rise as a regional power in the 15th century. Oba Iware, who reigned between 1440 and 1480, was arguably the most famous ruler of the kingdom of Benin. Oba Iware is said to have been a powerful warrior and magician, respected and feared by many. He conducted numerous military campaigns that served to enlarge the Benin Empire. The kingdom reached its greatest power and size under Obaiware the Great. He expanded the kingdom, improved and defended it with black ingenuity with the defensive walls of Benin City, a significant but not too celebrated achievement of the empire. With so much wealth, skill and power, the Great Wall of the Benin Empire was built. It is believed that the walls of Benin were constructed during Obaiware's reign. The walls consisted of two parts, a moot and a rampart. And according to historians, a ditch was dug to form the inner moat and the excavated earth was used to form the outer rampart. The walls no doubt contributed towards the defense of the city and was viewed symbolically as a representation of the power of the empire. According to the 1974 edition of the Guinness Book of Records, the walls of Benin were the world's largest earthwork carried out prior to the mechanical era. Elsewhere, it is claimed that they were four times longer than the Great Wall of China and consumed a hundred times more materials than the Great Pyramid of Cheops. It was also asserted that the walls extended for some 16,000 kilometers about 9,942 miles in all, and that it covered an area of 6,500 square kilometers, about 2,510 square miles. This ancient African architectural masterpiece was completely designed and executed by the Edo people. Today, the Benin Wall is still believed to be one of Africa's ancient architectural marvels as the original design structure and process are still studied. With its mathematical layout and earthwork, the Benin Empire was one of the best planned ancient cities in the world. Situated on a plain, the city was enclosed by massive walls in the south and deep ditches in the north. Beyond the city walls, numerous further walls were erected and separated the surrounding of the capital into around 500 distinct villages. The walls extended for some 16,000 kilometers in all in a mosaic of more than 500 interconnected settlement boundaries. They covered about 6,500 square kilometers and were all dug by the Edo people within an estimated 150 million hours. The planning and design of the Benin Empire was done according to careful rules of symmetry, proportionality and repetition, now known as fractal design. The mathematician Ron Eglash, the author of African Fractals, which examines the patterns, underpinning architecture, art and design in many parts of Africa, notes that the city and its surrounding villages were purposely laid out to form perfect fractals with similar shapes repeated in the rooms of each house and the house itself and the clusters of houses in the village in mathematical predictable patterns. The ancient Benin people used a form of mathematics that many around the world hadn't even discovered yet. Historians say when the Portuguese first discovered the city in 1485, 
they were stunned to find the vast kingdom made of hundreds of interlocked cities and villages in the middle of Africa. Indeed, the Benin Empire was classified as one of the most beautiful and best planned cities in the world. The astounding city was a series of earthworks made up of banks and ditches called Iya in the Edo language in the area around present-day Benin City, Nigeria. They consist of 15 kilometers of city Iya and an estimated 16,000 kilometers in the rural area around Benin. The walls stood for over 400 years, protecting the inhabitants of the kingdom as well as the traditions and civilization of the Edo people. According to Fred Peirce, as captured in the science magazine New Scientist, the Great Wall of the Benin Empire was at the time the largest single archaeological phenomenon on the planet. The Benin Empire was one of the first cities to have a semblance of street lighting, with huge metal lamps, many feet high, built and placed around the city. All the streets run straight and as far as the eyes can see. The houses are large, especially that of the Oba, which is richly decorated and has fine columns. There are accounts that the city was so well governed that theft was unknown to the people and the people lived in so great security that they had no doors to their houses. In his personal account, 17th century Dutch visitor Alfred Dapper wrote, Houses are built alongside the streets in good order, the one close to another, adorned with gables and steps. They are usually broad with long galleries inside, especially so in the case of the houses of the nobility. They are divided into many rooms, which are separated by walls made of red clay, very well erected. The walls are shiny and smooth by washing and rubbing, as any wall in Holland can be made with chalk, and they are like mirrors. The upper stories are made of the same sort of clay. Moreover, every house is provided with a well for the supply of fresh water, he explained. With all of its might and glory, the date of the construction of the Great Wall of the Benin Empire is unknown, but there are estimates that it was constructed between the first millennium to the 15th century.